Hello and welcome back, Fighter here. Uh, today we'll be doing something a little bit different. Uh, this is going to be a commentary of one of my solo key games. And the topic for today is how to avoid blaming your teammates. Okay, and uh, we'll be focusing on the things that you can control and the things that you can't. Okay, and how to let things go, how to focus on your own gameplay and play the best you can in your future games. So I'm playing Vex into Fizz. Uh, this matchup is pretty good for Vex. I had the counter pick in this game. I saw that I had Camille support. Uh, Camille's a great champion for Vex. Uh, you can consider picking Vex when you have something like a CC jungle and a CC support. So uh, Nautilus, Maokai, you know, um, Rel, whatever, whatever else uh, that has uh, ideally knock up CC, uh, which doesn't promote Merc Treads. Like for example, if you have Rel support, that's fantastic because enemy team will probably not buy Merc Treads um, and that's less MR that they're gonna have because obviously tenacity does not affect uh, Rel CC. Now here I know that Fizz uh, likes to go for the uh, the Raptor's Wood, and Velveth can also late invade, so I'm just playing for the couple of autos on Fizz. Um, sending him off the wave, but keep in mind I'm not using my ability, it's important that you're just patient. Uh, you can you can always proc your Electric Q from just auto attacks, uh, so in general if, you just, uh, if you're playing against a melee champ like this, just hold your spell until you can 100% land that fear. I uh, do the, the pull, like I usually do, which uh, makes the enemy minions not focus fire mine. Uh, focus fire mine rather, and uh, Fizz has to walk up three times to get the wave, and we get a nice little trade where we do the empowered auto from his E uh, into our E into another auto. So we get a nice little chunk, break the aggro really fast, and keep in mind I'm just slow pushing. You know, this is something you guys should do, is especially if you get a favorable chunk, make sure you don't rush the wave, make sure you're not um, pushing too fast, try and build as big of a wave as possible. You saw there that I'm only using my E to harass the Fizz when he's actually away from the wave. Um, so I'm trying not to actually damage the wave while harassing Fizz, because I don't want it to crash uh, too quickly. I place an early ward. I'm not particularly sure about what uh, Belveth's clear speed is like, but I know it's a pretty fast clear champion, so 225, 230 might be a bit dangerous to walk in, so I try to place it at 215. And uh, yeah, just constantly trading my E for Fizz's E. I know that my E is 70 mana, and Fizz's E is something ridiculous, like... Uh, I have to look it up, but it's definitely more than 70, so should be about 75 mana level 1, I think. Knowing that he doesn't have his uh, his E up, I just throw out one ability just to get the Scorch block proc. Uh, I see the Belveth is ganked me on my mini-map, so I'm just walking away from the threat. And now I know that because she showed there, I didn't actually see what buff she had, uh, but now I do see her. Uh, they're mid lane crossing back, so I'm just going to lean topside and play as aggressive as I want. I know that she can't really gank me, she can only gank me from this side, and as long as I'm sort of leaning towards my jacks, we're A-OK. -okay. And see how I'm not using my spells at all? Just when you play Vex, it's all about the single autos. You just throw out a single auto, walk away. Single auto, walk away. Try and force them uh, to go on you. This is a Fizz 1 trick, so he's, he's he also understands the mind games in the matchup. He always holds his E. And here I just uh, basically trade my fear for his E intentionally uh, to try and get my Camille an angle, but unfortunately my Camille does not press her E, she just presses E once and then goes in the wall, not sure what happened there, but uh, yeah, that could have been a, a flash burn from Fizz. That was a bit of a party mid lane, and uh, we, we, we go for the one for one here, which probably isn't the best decision, it's not bad, it's not good, uh, it's sort of like, if we go one for one there, we know they'll always push the wave in. Uh, that's why we grab the boots, and we just come back to try and miss as, as little as possible. So that one for one is quite good um, for me now, because they actually try to push the wave, and the Fizz is going to lose everything here, and I get a, a couple, um, a couple nice, uh, a couple nice creeps, get an XP lead. Unfortunately, my support does die. It is what it is. But uh, at this point, I should just be trying to slow push. So here, it's important that I actually catch this next wave before it meets my tower. I do, I, I walk a little bit too late to try and pull it. And one of the melees instantly dies. Um, and the other melee goes into tower range. If I had left, uh, stopped, if I wasn't so focused on CSing there, if I just tanked the wave, made sure that it wouldn't cross this line, I could have gone for a slow push, unfortunately. I didn't, I see that Fizz is bot lane, so whenever you see a lane roaming, just try and stop them from re-entering mid. And uh, Fizz is committed to this play. Here, I think the best play would be to just stay mid, right, and just push the wave, but... Uh, I kind of compensate, I go bot. Generally, this, this type of play is really bad if you don't have flash, because you can't guarantee you'll get anything out of it. And uh, I, I look back at mid lane and uh, it's actually frozen, so it was a pretty bad roam decision. Um, you know, we do 
get a kill out of it, but really it's just not a high percentage play. If I didn't get a kill there, it would have been horrible for me. And now my server decides to go mid, which is very questionable. If he wanted to go mid, he should have walked mid out of base. But he kind of walked halfway and now he's going mid to a lane that's like already, there's nothing there because it's frozen. Very strange decision making for my AD carry and now it's awkward for me as well, right? Because I want to go mid. I, I really don't want the Sibber to be taking my lane. And he ends up coming and inting and for a lot of people, like you might see this and you might get really tilted because this guy just walked mid and fed your lane. Um, your bot lane 0 and 5, your top lane 0 and 2. So a lot of people would just be thinking about opening this game, but... I try not to um, not to let it phase me, just keep playing uh, at the end of the day, as long as you have a good game, uh, the best way to be tilt proof is just to not make mistakes, because if you don't make mistakes, you can always win. Your champion is always strong enough to punish the enemy team, and uh, you just let the game kind of play out, and if you lose that game, but you played really well, you don't feel too bad about it. So here I just try to cancel his base, I know that he doesn't have teleport, unfortunately I did kind of push the, the lane automatically by cancelling his base there. I'm just trying to get information about whether he's basing or staying. It's not a cannon wave, so if I saw that he completed his base, I would just hard push, grab a plate. I saw that he cancelled his base, so we're going to wait out another 8 seconds. If he still hasn't shown up, then um, potentially we can just crash the wave and assume that he's recalled. I think at this point I've just assumed that he's recalled, and I'm just going to push the wave, get a turn. I can see that my teammates are about to explore on the river, so this is a great time. Look at your map when you're playing mid, and just try and... When your team is all on the same map, so on the same line like this, you're all pressuring at the same time. It's a great time to just push, push your push your wave and, and link up with your team. Here, I'm just playing for the play. Realistically, it's quite dangerous for me to be here because Belveth could be uh, gay, can be from bot side, but I didn't get punished this time around. I'm trying to link up with my jungler, but I do not have a turn, so really, I'm not expecting to do a full roam here. I just wanted to pop the plant, see if she's on dragon. We'll get the ward and come back to mid. This is quite dangerous. Fizz could have cut me off here. If he just dropped a couple creeps, he could have cut me off. And uh, now he gets a free turn, right? And that's why we don't overstay our turns. So when I left, my wave is already in the middle. And uh, I wasn't able to attend it. I gave Fizz a free push. Yes, I got the pink ward. But the price for that pink ward is that my Fizz can now go bot and get a free kill. And that's completely my fault as a mid for just not being in mid lane when the wave meets, okay? So make sure when you play against assassins, when you play against things like Katarina, Fizz, Silas, you're always there as soon as the wave meets so that you're not giving them an opportunity to roam like this, right? Because this was a very cheap roam for him. He just loses six CS and he gets a nice kill. And We do use, use this as an opportunity to base though. Um, we know that he could be coming behind us or he could be basing. If we continue trying to play for a plate there and he comes behind us, we're in a bit of trouble. So we just take the higher percentage play in and um, recall ourselves and come off fresh. Because he's greeting for the extra wave now, I'm going to be the one that gets a turn. So I'll be on this wave first. I'll have full resources. He's most likely going to base. And uh, I'll be able to look for a roam opportunity potentially. So that's what I'm thinking at, about right now. I'm thinking about my Jax's bot lane. I should get a, a turn here. I should be able to crash this wave. And I, I really want my Jax to link up with me. He doesn't, he goes through bot lane, and that's okay. We just drop our wave because we know Fizz can't be here. We just uh, have a look, see if we can impact something. We can't, just go straight back to mid lane. My team's starting the dragon. I'm trying to let my Camille know that she needs to watch out for the Fizz, but she's not marking the Fizz. Um, he doesn't fully commit to the dragon though because he's afraid of me. Um, we end up punishing that. We get the Drake. I'm looking for a second ult here, potentially on Smolder. I don't think I can kill Belveth with her damage reduction. So we try and fish for Smolder. Just out of range, just on the tip, unfortunately. And uh, because we're already close to this lane, we're just going to grab the farm. Here, my AD. My AD is actually going mid, but realistically, he should just go bot because there's an, there's equal waves in both lanes. And if he doesn't go bot here, then we'll have to lane swap afterwards. So I asked him to go bot, and then he was walking mid. And then I cancelled my base because I assume he's just not going to listen to me. And then he listened to me. And it's a bit of a frustrating scenario. You know, this can happen in your games where you've just spent 8 seconds basing, then you cancel it, and then you have to rebase again. That's 10 seconds gone. It's very easy to get tilted by that, start typing to people, but. It's important to just keep a cool head, you know, just uh, leave the past in the past and think about how you can win the game.
So here, there's no objectives up. I see that the entire enemy team is hovering bot side, but I'm not actually interested in, in coming here because I know that my Jax is going top. So best case scenario, this here is going to be a 3v4. That's the best case scenario. My Camille doesn't understand the, the numbers game, so she walks in and dies. But again, I'm not going to compensate. You know, I'm trying to get the most out of it. I see the Pantheon is left. And so I'm stopping Fizz from walking back in, you know. Fizz has to pay the price of a couple CS for making that roam, you know. I don't need to self-sabotage and compensate by getting the kill back on Fizz after my Camille dies. It's all good. Just take the small wins, you know. Stop them from coming back to mid lane and get a small CS lead. We get a nice little kill on Fizz here. Um... Wait for Z to be down and get the full combo. Didn't respect our ignite, and we've we've now got six dark seal stacks. And if you look at the top right, it's not looking too uh, it's not looking too good. You know, the uh, I've got four out of six kills. The rest of my team has died 14 times. Uh, but again, we're just not participating in losing lanes. This is a really important concept. And if Pantheon decides he can kill me. He's feeling strong because he's having a good game. My bot lane 0 and 9, 1 and 9, my top lane 0 and 4. It's looking bad, um, but that's but that's a reason for the enemy team to make mistakes, you know, they're getting cocky. So it's important, if you're, if you're staying strong yourself, if you're keeping up in farm, if you're just worrying about your own lane, your own game, that's the best contribution you can do to your team in a game like this, is just make sure you don't die, okay? Because as long as you're alive, you can defend towers, you can contest objectives, you can punish greed, okay? So... Don't worry about the rest of the map, just play for yourself, and uh, any game's winnable. Here again, I see that my whole team's bot side, right, so I'm considering roaming bot. Uh, but I see the Fizz is there way before me, so I don't even bother with it. Fizz is dead. So that's again another another opportunity for me to punish him for the roam. Just hit the tower, play for your lane. Don't cons you know, don't try to salvage by going here and killing Belveth and winning both sides of the map, or... I'm just telling my Jax, hey, uh, if you can play for Wolves, that protects me, I can get this tower, and I can protect you. If Belveth's here, uh, you kind of just help each other, right? So that's that's a good suggestion. My Jax there was considering going to Grubs, but I knew that there's just no way that we make it there in time. And even if we do, um, you know, they have Pantheon ult, and it's just a 2v2, 2v3 at best. So we play for the mid tower, we take their camps, I try to help with the knowledge gaps. And I'm not getting overly greedy, you see, you know, I've got eight Dark Seal stacks. I've got way more to lose than to gain from killing this Fizz. But like like I said in my uh, coaching videos, you got over a thousand gold, just consider basing. So here I'm contemplating basing, but I think we have one turn to go bot, because uh, the, the jungler showed topside after doing the, the grubs. So I go here, make a very quick play, get a little bit lucky on that Vexalt. I get another two kills, and instantly, immediately, as soon as we get the two kills, we go to a bush that is safe, we go to a place that is pink watered, and then we just recall. Okay, so don't overstay, don't try to take this guy's plates, never do this guys, never share plates with your AD carry, never share farm with your AD carry. If you do a roam, as soon as the play is over, immediately just base. Just base, and uh, run back to mid, and pick up the rest of your farm. We lost a couple plates for that play, which is natural, you know, that's the punish for, for roaming. Um, there's two objectives up, we've got the Rift and we've got the Dragon. Now again, I just see that we have more champions on this side of the map than on this side, so instead of trying to tell my team to go Dragon, I, I'm, I'm saying, guys, we're already here, let's play for Rift. Now unfortunately, instead of walking in together, uh, linked up as three, my Camille walks in by herself and dies instantly. Again, I'm not gonna compensate for her mistake. She died, but I know as long as I'm alive, I can defend the mid tower. Alright, what are they gonna get with this death? Well, they already got the Rift before they even killed her. You know, it's just the dragon for them. Um, but if I died there as well, then we would lose mid tower and the dragon. So that's good, good little awareness and knowing that they're all going bot side. I'm considering making a play on Darius. I think at this point he's got a 700 G bounty. Uh, it's a really, really good look. This could be a huge amount of gold. And again, once we kill him, there's also an objective for us to take. So it's a really high value kill. Um, I try and pink the the most common spots. The most common spots from top laners will be the ward that you just saw. It can also be warded over the on the blue bush. Uh, I mean, over the blue wall, so you kind of just have to pink or sweep that, and just be really patient with your ult when you're playing Vex, you know, I know that I can't kill uh, Belveth if, if my ult hits Belveth, and my goal here is to either kill Smolder, because I know I can one-shot her, or obviously the, the 1k bounty there is fantastic, so we're more than happy with that. 
And again, I've got the Vijayas, right? So don't push your limits. The fight's over. Is there an AD carry to catch this wave? There is. So I'm just going to let the Civic catch the wave. You know, I'm not going to greed. I'm not going to go for camps or anything like that. Just immediately base, run to a free lane. You know, you've got a top, your top, your mid. All right. Top, you and the AD carry need farm. Okay. So when your top is top, your, your AD carry is mid, just go bot. Just put one person in each lane so that you're min-maxing the farm as much as possible and getting the most gold as a team. All right, it's not just about your gold, it's about everybody. So try and be efficient with the farm. I can see that uh, the enemy team has made a play on my Fiora. She managed to survive. And uh, that means that I'm quite safe here. A lot of people would blue trinket like this, you know, because you're just autopilot thinking that somebody could be there. They can't. I know that there was multiple champs topside, so instead I'm going to save my blue trinket for something deeper. Probably should have blue trinketed the Gromp here instead of blue trinketing the, uh, the blue bush. I think the Gromp one is much, much safer to catch this wave, right? Because after this tower, I'm going to be looking to catch this plus one wave. Uh, but turns out there's a Fizz here. I miss my fear. It is what it is. You can't play perfectly. Uh, but my goal is to take this tower because I know I should have more people on the side of the map. And uh, notice that I'm not playing too aggressive, you know, I'm trying to invite him in, make him feel a little bit safe. And he ends up dying to my Camille. Pantheon does the compensation thing that we talked about where his teammate has clearly made a mistake, but instead of just letting him go, uh, he goes and dies as well. So a bit of a chain feed, a, a great sign for us. Uh, a good way to win solo queues just to... After killing one guy, you try to kill another. And here I'm inviting the chain feed. I'm hoping I've got four champions here right now. It'd be fantastic if they uh, try to fight us. And Belveth does not respect that she's on the weak side of the map and uh, decides to contest the blue buff anyway. She feels strong. She feels like they're winning. But unfortunately, they're not. And uh, we get a nice reset on the ult. And we try and get out. We know the Pantheon is alive, so uh, we're conserving our Magi's. It's really, really important, guys. Just be willing to sacrifice your teammates. If you have a Magi's, if you have a Bounty, don't compensate. It's all good. They've died, but I'm the big, I'm the big prize, and uh, I'm not going to give myself away for free. So a good rule of thumb to follow is, once you've died bot side like this, don't ever walk bot side again. Okay, because there's going to be wards here, you know, here Pantheon's just placed a bunch of wards. There's no point going in that area because there's going to be no kills for us. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go walk mid and try and fight for this, right? Just consider, okay, I want to play on the opposite side. Yes, there's a big wave bot, but I know that somebody has to play for this red buff, right? Somebody probably will walk to this red buff. So I'm just letting my teammates know, hey, I want to push mid. I want to play here as four. You know, I want us to push these two lanes. I really didn't want my Fiora to come here, but she did anyway. And this guy's like 0 9 at this point, at 0 8. Um, and we just try and stay out of vision. And uh, try and look for a mid alt play. It's great to do on Vex if there's no urgency on side lanes, you know. If there's no super big rush to catch this wave. Just look for an alt play mid. Um, fortunately here, I kind of landed on the wrong person. And it doesn't, doesn't quite work out for us. As well as we'd like. Could have been okay if I waited for my uh, Q fear to come back up, but instead we ended up getting pretty much aced. Uh, Fiora did stick to, to pushing top lane. I think the mistake there was just forcing on mid. I should have just kind of stayed in that top side jungle. Obviously there is a bot wave to attend. I should have, I could have just attended that bot wave, but because I have no ignite, um, I had a feeling that my team would just die somewhere here. Um, because I'm the most fed member on the team, if I just go bot and my team gets aced, you know, it's just. I can't contribute anything. So sometimes I think when you're fed, you, you like it's totally fine to just walk to a side that doesn't have any farm and just play for the fight. On uh, Vex specifically, because you have a you know a trigger button, a way to pull the trigger. But it's okay. You know we'd be playing a perfect game and we've made a mistake, and that's okay. You are allowed to make mistakes and still win the game. So here we're just uh, seeing if they overcommit. The next objective is Dragon. We don't really want to fight the dragon with our jungler being 1 HP, so I'm also just considering ulting somebody on the bot wave. And uh, if nobody shows, then I won't look. But it looks like they're not defending either entrance. So the way that I'm, the reasoning here is the reason why we're contesting is because they're actually giving us a double flank, a double pincer. Nobody is marking either side. So whenever you find this on Vex, it's so easy for you to find an alt angle because I could really be standing anywhere. It seems like they haven't warded either side of the dragon and when the enemy team is corralled like this and you're coming from three angles it's just so hard for them to fight so it's all about the patience uh, really it's just about going in 
starting the fight because I can see that the angle is good for us. I know I can't one shot Darius, but I just want the fight to start there because we're coming from three different angles and they really are corralled into this one path. Um, and so we end up just starting the fight, not really one shotting anyone, just kind of acting as a uh, Lissandra, so to speak. And I'm trying to get my teammates to commit mid here because I know that we can get both objectives and there's really no reason for us to only get one. And the problem there was uh, my Sivir hitting the dragon. I think if Sivir went mid, this would have been a bit easier. I do kind of compensate here as well. Like I don't, we're going to get that tower regardless. I don't need to die for it, especially with Majais. But I'm just a little bit tilted from people not listening to me and only assigning two people, two two champions mid there instead of three. But that's okay. That's okay. Again, mistakes happen. Uh, we don't play perfectly. We've, we've done a pretty good job of conserving our life, but eventually you will die, you will get picked off, you have those sums, and you know, you got to play aggressive to win. But this game has equalized, and uh, the next time I press tab, we'll see that yeah, our Fiora is 0, 6, 0, our AD carry is 0, 5. Uh, so really, there's no other carries, it's just kind of me. Um, <laughs> and funnily enough, I think Camille is more of a carry than my, uh, than my Jax at this point in the game. But again, you know, I see that they committed bot side, so my goal, if I go bot here, you know, what can we achieve? If I go bot and I kill one guy, uh, maybe we, like, I'll just make a pick happen, uh, but we can never do Baron because I don't have TP. You know, I can never take this tower solo because I'm playing Vex. So I really, really want my Camille to just go to Baron and ward it because when you're down 4v5, you basically can't show bot lane because if, if I show bot lane here, it now becomes 3v5, all right? So if it's 4v5, they might not start the Baron because the Baron is kind of like a champion for us, right? But if it's 3v5, then they will very likely start it. So my Camille can never be bot side there um, if I'm going to catch that wave, you know, because they will start it as soon as they see me. So we need some sort of vision, some sort of indication that they're going for it. I do have my blue trinket, so I blue trinket the Baron. And it, it takes quite a while for them. Jax does a really great engage. And we end up uh, actually cleaning this fight up, which was surprising. We do some blind R's with no uh, with no vision, some little highlights there. Uh, unfortunately, our wave is not in a position uh, to actually capitalize on the inhib. Um, I kind of realized that a little bit too late. Camille's taking care of it. Uh, we waste uh, quite a bit of the, the timers on just doing nothing. And. I didn't really realize, but there was potentially an end angle here because we do have Fiora with Demolish. Uh, maybe if we all just ran mid instead of pushing that top wave. Kind of realized it a little bit too late. It would have been a very tight end. Uh, Smolder does have great wave clear. Um, but because we were very hesitant there, you know, between ending and then top and hib and then people just fighting mid, this is what you don't want to do. You know, when you take one side of the base, you should always know what you want to do. And, and like how far you're going to commit. So if we take this, like I should know, okay, I'm going to play tower and I'm going to play recall, right? Or I'm going to play for inhib and then I'm going to play recall. Or I'm just going to play recall. I'm just going to play their camps and recall. And if you try to get too much, you know, you'll get aced because they're just coming off base with full, you know, we've got, how much did I have there? Maybe 2,000 gold unspent. You know, all of my teammates probably had the same 500, 1,000. Um, so we're basically down three, four, five thousand gold there because we haven't spent our money. Uh, we really want to avoid a fight. We want to avoid getting teleported on from behind as well. Uh, so it is what it is. Uh, we we didn't we didn't plan ahead. We just kind of on the fly tossed up both options. Did neither really and got punished for it. But the positive thing is that there was no objectives up, and it's okay. You're allowed to throw in the enemy base if there's no objectives up because the waves are so far away that the enemy can't really uh, get any of your towers in return. All they can really do is retake control of one side of the map. And when your teammate is getting caught like this, if you have a split push champ, you never want to walk towards your split push champ like what Camille is doing. You know, like if we just all grouped in one lane, there's no, there's no way to make progress. You know, small double just kill that wave. Uh, we don't have Baron. So this is just really, really bad decision making by my Camille. We should be playing here to help our Fiora. We can help our Fiora by playing away from her and making sure that when everybody commits to kill her, we can actually get something in response. And here I can see my Camille's basing, my Sivir doesn't want to push mid, and it's just awkward. You know, when you see people basing like that, these are terrible bases because our Camille, uh, our Fiora is pushing at the same time, so we need to be on the same line, so we need to pressure mid. Otherwise our Fiora will die for absolutely nothing. Um, so these guys definitely need to watch a uh, Tempo Lines video. Uh, I'm the only one mid, unfortunately I'm playing a mage, the Darius just runs me down, I can't really get any trades off. It's a very frustrating situation to be in, but again we try to make the most out of it. I see that our Fiora has no TP uh, for this dragon, so I've already, I've already, I've already admitted that this dragon's gone. You know, I'm not, I'm not thinking about contesting this Drake. If the enemy team 
uh, commits to it, I'm more than happy to just trade some top waves, potential inhib backdoor. I see that they're committing to me instead, which is pretty interesting considering how um, how soon the Baron's going to be, uh, the Dragon's going to be spawning. Uh, so we end up greedy for one more wave, uh, just to get our item. I think oh, we already have our item, our item, so we could have actually based a little bit earlier. Got our void stuff, and I uh, continuously just try and ping. It's important that you just keep keep sending the same message until it's heard. You know, there I can tell that my message has not been heard because my champions are still in the vicinity of dragons. So, um, but in the end, uh, you know, I think we pinged enough. We did like 20 pings, so I team I team did not su suicide at the dragon. Um, very very happy with that. And uh, yeah, when they're all bot side like this, you just need to you just need to take the other side of the map. You just need to take control on the other side, or of course engage in mid is totally fine if you're playing Vex. And here I I am <laughs> I am a chat muted, and I see my Siva basing, and I'm just telling her please stop basing, man. We need to be on the same line as Fiora and actually pressure their base. Actually get a trade off. They should be getting punished for this bot play. The punish is not to run bot because by the time we get there, our teammates are either dead or they're alive. The punish is to take their base, to trade something on the other side. Um, so if you're confident about these concepts yourself, you can really just shot call any solo key game. Um, but you got to be confident to make these kind of uh, calls because your teammates will often be a little bit unresponsive. And here, my Civ is trying to backdoor the Nexus instead of killing these champs here and winning the game. Which, uh, you know, we're trying to get the most out of it playing pretty well mechanically, just trying to space as well as we can. But at the end of the day, this Darius has double magic resist items and a Sterex, which I didn't see. So there's not too much we can do here. Uh, if Siva just moved, in the, I mean, this skirmish took about 30 seconds and the Siva didn't move. And here at this point, I really just want to sell my items and, and go to the Happy Bush. Um, just because of what my Siva did, because if she just walked up, we would have killed them and ended the game. And I do know that if I unmute here and I try to type the Siva, uh, it's going to be just bad for our win chances you know this guy's already not trying to win so what you can do is you can just report them you know just just take your take your frustrations out in a way that doesn't you know make things worse like if i report him it's a silent method he probably won't get banned or anything but it's just a way for me to, to let out my steam without typing so just think of like anything you can do if you get frustrated in the game because you feel like someone's griefing just anything that's not typing do not type because typing will just make the siva who's already not trying to win like, he's not trying to win, but he's not trying to lose. He's just kind of, he just doesn't care about the game. You know, because something went wrong and he feels like he's playing below his level and he doesn't want to play. He wants another shot. He wants to start from the start, uh, from the beginning and uh, make sure not to trigger him, is my point. When people get emotional, don't trigger them. Just don't talk to them. Cut off the communication and let your play, you know, do the talking. And in this case, I just wanted to type that uh, I want Fiora to be bought and Fiora to be a Baron because a lot of the time, uh, people will play three lanes, and if you don't have an inhib down, there's really no reason to play three lanes here. If we play three lanes, we won't be able to trade. People will get picked off. And uh, this is a little bit frustrating because my Jax is actually kiting the Scuttle up instead of down. So this should be a very losing play for them. You know, like, uh, they've committed to the Fiora. Their strongest member is the the Smolder, and they've, they've tried a 3v4 mid. But because my Jax is actually kiting the Scuttle up, even though we're going through mid, uh, he's not in a position to defend me on that wave. I mean, obviously, yes, I could be also looking at my map and and tracking where he is, but I just I just assumed that if I spam ping push mid, push mid, my jungler would path towards me instead of away from me. It is what it is. I think that's it's hard to lay blame on someone there. I think there was a knowledge gap from Jax, but I could have also just, you know, not egoed it and just waited three seconds for my teammates to be there. And yeah, look, it's it happens. It's not a it's not a perfect execution. I also had Zonya's there, so I could have Zonya'd some of the fizz damage potentially. Um, but again, while you're dead, just try and communicate with your team. You know, I see that my Siva wants to contest Baron one v four solo. Uh, it's a really interesting decision. And I quickly, uh, you see stuff like this being typed. I quickly turned off my chat because this this type of shit is just useless. You know, like just people venting. Like, what is the point of this? It's just there's no value to anyone. Not to you, because you're using your mental stack on typing. Not to the person you're typing to, because you're just calling them shit. And that, that makes them feel bad. And guess what? If somebody thinks that you think that they're shit, that actually makes them play worse. Because you're the teammate, and you know, it makes them respect you less, and makes them want to win less, because they're like, oh, this guy doesn't doesn't think I'm good. Who cares, man? I don't care about this win. If he loses, I'm winning. You know, Don't type, guys. Biggest takeaway of this game. You can win any game, as long as you just don't type. Ping. Ping as much as you can. Communicate. I'm saying, look, they have so many champions here, we have three champions here. 
my Camille still wants to contest the dragon. But th that's okay, I'm communicating to her. I am leading by example. That's really, really important. Like, be confident in the calls, follow the fundamentals, you know? They're taking bot side, we are down a player. Cool, we're gonna take top side. It's as simple as that. League is just push and pull. If you've lost a player, you never walk to the same side that the enemy team is on. That's it. So we just try and pull them back to their base. Um, try and trade something for the dragon. They end up actually not going to the dragon and they end up fighting us in their base. And this is what you wanna do. You know, if you're losing in a game and you really can't 1v5 skirmishes, you have to find these little angles uh, these little opportunities to just make the game random. Just just add all these little variables, like so that the team, you know, if you just if you just play a, a, a front to back five v five, and the enemy team is up seven eight thousand gold, you can't win. You know, just because everybody has done that front to back fight with similar champions hundreds thousands of times maybe, so everybody will execute at a reasonable level and you will lose. So you have to complicate the game. You have to make it more weird for the enemy team by doing little back doors or you know, going for 2v2, 3v3 skirmishes on the sides, just make it really complicated. And here, it's a 3v4, the enemy team is still contesting. Uh, they're not following our rules about the fundamentals. And uh, my goal here is just to protect my Siva. Uh, I don't see that I can uh, one-shot Darius, I can't really one-shot Belveth. So my goal really is just to keep my Siva alive. Should have pressed my Zonyas there, but I, I think I pressed it when I was knocked up and then I didn't spam it and I ended up dying. That's okay, we win the fight though. It's important that you know your role as Vex, right? Uh, in fights, just just uh, respect the fact that sometimes people just buy a bunch of MR and late game, you can no longer one-shot the front line. You know, you can no longer one-shot most of the champs in this game. The only champions I can really one-shot is, uh, you know, Smolder and Pantheon. Uh, I can't really one-shot Fizz because he has E and Zonyas. So my goal kind of becomes like just a peel champ. I'm just a, a support with CC, uh, even though my, excuse me, my AD carry is useless. Uh, it's still, that's my role. That's how I should play the game. That's how my champion functions when the enemy frontline has, has bought two magic resist items each. Uh, in fact, Belveth has three. Um, so just play your role. Don't don't think about the game like, oh, my AD carry sucks, so I'm not going to peel them. You know, uh, if if the enemy top laner has two MR items, you have to peel your AD carry. So just play properly and uh, should win you most of your games. Here, I see that my team is retaking control top side. Uh, so most likely, what's going to happen is. Uh, they're all going to base, and I just want to push the other side right now and link up with my team. There's really no fight right now because we haven't spent our money, so I'm just trying to ping them back. I'll let them know that again, you guys need to buy. You can't you can't fight with no items. Make sure I'm not getting cheesed by some weird pathing from enemy top. And then just run away straight away, just expecting that if Darius has ghost, he could run me down. And just linking up with my team. You know, especially if you play Ignite Vex, you just push out the side wave, and when you see that your teammates are starting to pressure the map, just recall and, and come back to them and walk to them. You know, make sure that you're on the map at the same time as your team. You're not pushing by yourself, and you're not letting your teammates push by themselves. So here, uh, my server is for some reason top lane. But that's okay, again, like I see that I have more champions on this side of the map, so I'm kind of walking towards my champions because this is more likely to be a fight here that's winning. And really, you just need to control mid. You know, we know that all we need to do is go four top. I know that, and unfortunately, I have to unmute because my pings are not being effective. So I try and I try and find a different method of communication here. I, I try to stay out of vision of the Darius. I think he hasn't spotted me. We we'll look for an opportunity, but I also know that my ultimate is such a long cooldown. So if you miss your ult on Vex, uh, really, uh, there's a high chance that your team will still fight in the next 60 sec 70 seconds, and. Uh, you just don't cast it. If you're not 100% sure, don't cast it. This bush is very likely to be warded. This is very common ward. Whereas this, these two bushes are unlikely to be uh, to be warded by the enemy team. So try and not walk this way. You know, if you're looking for a flank on Vex, if you're looking for a creative angle, always take the most unlikely uh, warded route. And uh, we end up seeing a fight, but we're very, very patient. Watch how patient I am with my ult. I know that there's only two people I can kill. Uh, that is Pantheon and Smolder. We wait until we get an angle on Smolder. Uh, we get the kill. And uh, at this point, we've gotten so many bounties, so many shutdowns throughout this game that even though the kills are, we're still behind in kills, uh, I'd, I'd imagine that we're ahead in gold. I go and check, make sure that Belveth hasn't actually proxied our wave, because that's the only way we could potentially not end the game. And uh, we end up winning. So uh, I hope this game's a good example for you of, uh, I guess, how to play Vex versus uh, melee champs, but also how to just use communication in a positive way. You know, don't type useless shit that's just going to make your teammates perform worse 
if you get an itch, if you need a really, if you, if you need a vent to do something, just report your team. Like use that as a little vent, or just talk it out loud, say it out loud. Man, my jack sucks, but just don't type, don't be toxic, and yeah, good luck in your solo key games.